Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back or welcome to my podcast, Rewired to Inspire. I'm your host, Jesse Brown, and I am very excited to be jumping on the microphone with you all. Goodness, it's like I've never done that introduction before. But today we are doing episode 206. If you missed my last episode, number 205, we talked about common struggles and I leaned into being a little more vulnerable with you guys and sharing some deep struggles that I've been dealing with that I've dealt with for most of my life, but felt like it was finally time to truly open up about some of these things. As a mental health podcast of someone who wants to lead the way and inspire, you know, the next generation and our youth and even just folks in general, that it is safe to talk about mental health and to normalize conversations pertaining to mental health. I realize that I have a duty as well to make sure that I'm showing up and putting myself out there as much as it feels comfortable for me to do so. And so I hope that if you haven't checked out that episode, you definitely check it out and just see how it resonates with you. And my main theme of that episode was for listeners to not feel alone and to have somebody there in moments when you feel overwhelmed, you feel triggered, you feel out of touch with yourself or reality and just have a safe place that can bring you back to earth and to ground you. So definitely check out that episode if you haven't already. For today's episode, we are going to be talking about triggers. And I have yet to title this episode. Sometimes I think of my titles after I record, sometimes it's before, it kind of just depends where we ebb and flow with, with the podcast. But the theme for today is to talk about triggers. And I talked about this a little bit in Tuesday's episode and I kind of, you know, give you guys a, a heads up that we were gonna be talking about that today. But this is one of my favorite topics. And the reason it's one of my favorite topics is Because before I knew and really comprehended what triggers were, I felt very different from everybody else. I felt very alone in my struggles, feeling like there was something wrong with me. Why am I responding in this way? And as I started to deepen my comprehension of triggers and what they were and how they affect our body, it gave me permission to be gentle with myself as I'm navigating through. So today we're gonna talk about what some of my triggers are, what triggers are, how you know they kind of come to fruition. But as I was thinking about today's episode, I kept thinking back to kind of a trigger for me that is out of my control. And it's not what you're thinking. So when I was four years old, I had my first allergic reaction. So I remember it very clearly. I was at my nanny's house it was Boxing Day, and I remember there was a nutcracker. There was walnuts there that we were using in the nutcracker, and I just thought this was so fascinating at four years old. And I remember grabbing a walnut and taking it to my uncle and being like, hey, can you help me open this? I wanna see how this like nutcracker thing works. This is super cool. And I remember kind of like jumps in time. I mean, I was only four years old, but I do remember this day very vividly. And I remember I just started to become very wheezy and I had a hard time breathing and I didn't even consume the walnut. I had just touched my eyes and that motion of contact had led to me going into full anaphylactic. And I had never, you know, experienced anything like this. I had consumed tree nuts in the past. So my parents were equally like, what is going on? I'm sure terrified. I remember looking at my brother who was in the corner of the room, absolutely terrified. Like, is my sister about to die? What is going on? So we rushed to the hospital. I just remember like having blood taken and given an IV and being weighed and questions to my parents. And then I just remember kind of blacking out and waking up. And the reason I share this story with you guys is because after I woke up and learned what had kind of happened to me, I mean, I was only four, I was just little, and being told, you know, you can never eat nuts again. You are severely allergic to nuts. And I remember like, I kind of understood, but I didn't really. I just remember I was told I couldn't eat peanut butter and that was like the end of the world for me. But that in the blink of a second became a trigger for my body a physiological trigger that will ignite should I consume tree nuts. 
I apologize about my dog. I had to pause for a second. There was a package being delivered. But from this day forward, it was, you know, communicated to me, this will be a trigger that will take over your body. That was a physical thing that I was being told to avoid because they basically, you know, found out you are severely allergic to this, you consume this or interact with this, sometimes even airborne, you will have a response to that. I share that with you because that is something that I know that if I interact with, I will have a response to. There are so many things in my life and in your life that we were not just given on a piece of paper communicated to, these are your triggers, you know, try to avoid these things. And I'm not saying, you know, we need to avoid our triggers. In fact, I'm kind of saying the opposite. However, we weren't just told the things that are going to cause us to have an emotional response to it, a trigger, an overwhelm, a, you know, some kind of reaction, which is no pun intended. And depending on your life and your experiences and your traumas and whatever, you're going to have certain triggers. Some of them very micro, meaning down to like the smell of something, the sound of something, or very macro. So, you know, men in general or grocery stores in general, like we can have th these different severities and different things. And I want to just validate that no trigger is stupid, is silly is, you know, something to be shameful about because every trigger exists for a reason. And that's why I want to talk about this episode because before I knew what some of my triggers were, I would just feel like, why? Why am I feeling like this? Why do I get so agitated and why do I get so, you know, tense and I have a hard time breathing, I have a hard time communicating? Why am I so sweaty when I do those certain things? And I just didn't realize that I was having these automatic responses to certain things because I didn't realize that they were quote unquote triggers for me. And again, I apologize, Bailey's in the background. I assume there's still something going on outside, but nonetheless, we're gonna keep on keeping on. That is definitely one of my triggers. When there is sudden loud noises like that or unpredictability, it just takes my consciousness somewhere else. And so I usually just have to take a second to allow my heart rate to come back down and come back to my body. But in saying that, a few of my other triggers, one of them is fear of getting in trouble. This is a huge trigger for me. So the other day after, so me and my partner coach basketball together. And after we had finished with our game, my partner and I were like, let's just put a couple shots up. We're here, there's nobody in the gym, it's not booked. And I kept looking at the door, waiting for somebody to come in and yell at us. I just have this little inner part of me that is so scared to get in trouble that it becomes like a trigger anytime there is potential to be yelled at. Another one for me, which I just expressed, is loud noises. Whenever there is sudden loud noises or if someone scares me, it really, really triggers me. And it's not a trigger that I can't just calm myself down and once I, you know, my rational brain comes back on and realizes it was just a joke. But those things really overwhelm my system, any kind of sudden, unpredictable, loud noise or motion. Another one is when somebody's talking at me. When someone's like not having a conversation with me or is like angry and agitated and talking at me and talking to me like I am less than or victimizing me or just those things really make me feel icky and uncomfortable and I can physically feel myself shifting into a shutdown state. And the la and I have a lot of triggers again, you guys, I'm just listing some quick ones, but the last one for me is when people are severely intoxicated. When people are severely intoxicated to the point where they have, you know, they're slurring their words, they're kind of like falling, like whatever, just severely intoxicated people, really trigger and overwhelm me and I think that that comes back to the unpredictability piece. I don't like when things are unpredictable, specifically men, women as well, but specifically when men are in that, you know, state, it really, really bothers me and makes me feel really uncomfortable, which does make sense. And pairing with past experiences that I have had, they tie very nicely together, which is why they exist. Why I'm sharing all this with you is because A, I like to lead by example of that you are not alone in your triggers. And you might think that some of them are silly, they're not. I remember an old client that I worked with for over two years had a severe trigger of grocery stores. 
he unfortunately had worked in a grocery store and had a boss or manager that did not treat him very fairly and he ended up resigning from that job was then stuck at home had a fear of work and a fear of grocery stores could not get himself to go to any grocery store because his mind associated every grocery store is the same and that's what our mind does with triggers is it associates everything as the same that could be potentially in that same category so for example i would hear all the time from my sexual assault survivors you know all men are bad all men trigger me and it's like i hear what you're saying and it's so easy for us to have those macro associations but this is why it's important that we identify what our triggers are and we talk about them and we talk about where they come from because think of how much we're limiting our life when we put everything into this huge box huge category like all men are bad all grocery stores are dangerous think of how much we're capping the quality of our life because we're trying to keep ourselves safe and protect ourselves. And I'm not saying that it's not okay to take time and that that isn't valid and that, you know, it's going to be easy to get back out there or to expose yourself. But by just getting to know what your triggers are, because a lot of folks didn't realize, you know, I have a fear of men, I have a fear of grocery stores, whatever. It just kind of existed subconsciously for them. And they didn't realize why anytime somebody would talk about going to get groceries, they would be like a full, full trauma response. And they'd be like, where the hell is this coming from? And then we would break it down. Be like, well, have you ever felt that way around this person? No, okay. Have you ever felt that way around food before? Well, not directly, but like kind of this one time when I worked at this job and you're like, oh, there it is, okay. So it's kind of reversing things. And that is why talk therapy is so powerful. And I apologize, if you're watching camera, I'm talking extra with my hands today. Sometimes talking with my hands helps me stay in flow and stay on, on beat, but I recognize I've been told that that's like kind of annoying, so I'm working on not talking so much with my hands, but also it's kind of how I am. So anyways, tomato, tomato, um, I'm going to keep on keeping on. But basically that is one of the reasons why I'm such an advocate for talk therapy is because it allows you to connect the dots on why things exist for you. Some of the deepest work that I did with clients that would sometimes take years is just figuring out what your triggers are. And the thing is, is even if you can't fully get rid of a trigger, it's you know always kind of gonna exist a little bit. When you're consciously aware of it, it gives it less of an emotional charge. And I'm just gonna flip this here because I remember I wrote something down yesterday. I knew it was on this page that I wanted to talk about, but I want you guys to think of a trigger and when it's poked like other people touching unresolved trauma for you so when somebody pokes at something it's likely them poking unresolved trauma within your body and i want us to think about unresolved trauma almost like an open wound on our body and when we have an open wound on our body what do we do we protect it we try to keep it safe we try to bandage it up we don't want anyone to like bump into it or hit it or see it or talk about it we just want to protect it and when that happens you start to try to have control over your whole environment and control what other people do and who you surround yourself with and where you go and you just get so hyper aware of protecting yourself and what it does is it starts to narrow your world and make your world smaller and smaller and smaller and then we often feel isolated and alone and again i always talk about things from a very macro trauma informed perspective because i'm talking about the folks that don't really have a voice for these things that are like i could never begin to tell someone that i can't go grocery shopping because that's so shameful i want us to validate that that is so common more common than we realize. Trigger, like I said, it can be down to just, you know, I see someone in a red shirt and that triggers me because my perpetrator was wearing a red shirt and so every time that happens, it overwhelms me. The reason I wanna talk about this isn't because it's gonna take away your experiences, makes them less valid, it's gonna make triggers go away, but I want us to talk about these things so that we can begin to be gentle on ourselves 
when we see that red shirt, when we have to go into a grocery store, when we have to have an encounter with a man, just based on the examples I've shared today, and to prepare you and to support you through that process. And I'm not gonna be able to obviously fully give you the tools and tips for that because that is a long process. And again, it's something I encourage you to do with a mental health professional because that's going to look unique to you. But I wanted to just allow you guys to hold the capacity for yourselves to validate that you likely have triggers. Even if you're sitting there going, well, I don't have any triggers. You probably do, you most likely do. They might not have as strong of a pull, meaning they don't take over your system as much, but maybe they do take over your mood and you don't realize. Maybe they shift your energy and you don't realize, right? I know some triggers for me that would be considered small are just when I feel insecure in my relationship or I feel like, oh my God, my partner's gonna leave me or this woman just looked at my partner with like googly eyes and then I get really insecure. It's like, they can be that small and now I can laugh about those things because I'm like, okay, like I need to do the work on that. But some of my bigger triggers, like loud noises and stuff like that, that is so deep in my nervous system that I might not ever be able to shake that, but I can calm myself down in the moment to be like, it's okay, it was just a car driving by, or it was just something that fell in the fridge. Like, it's okay, you're safe. And that has been my mantra for this week, is telling myself, I am safe. I am grounded, I am safe. I've been focusing a lot more on my breath work and just trying to come back to my body and calm my nervous system. Because as someone who has definitely lived in a state of fight or flight and very responsive to triggers, I know what it's like to be stuck there and to feel like it can never get better. It's always gonna feel impossible. The world's always gonna feel heavy. You're always gonna feel like you're protecting your wounds. I promise you it can get better, but not until you're willing to face them and to even look at them, to dissect them and see what's going on, to be curious about where they came from and to love yourself through that process. So again, some things I would recommend if I could are to Reflect. The next time you feel yourself triggered, stop and notice. What happened? Where am I? What am I wearing? Who am I with? What does it smell like? What does it look like? Does this remind me of any time in my life? Reflect on that. Communicate to anyone you feel safe to opening up about. Like, hey, I experienced this today and I don't know why, but you know, I wanna talk about it. And sometimes talking about it allows us to connect the dots. Learning to self-soothe and to ground ourselves in those moments. So coming back to our body. I am safe. There is no threats right now in this moment. I know that it's been scary in the past, but right now in this moment, I don't have to be scared. And then on that, being gentle with yourself and kind with yourself and loving yourself through it because anytime you have a response to something, you have a response for a reason and your body's just trying to keep you safe and to love you and protect you. And so the more that we can shift that and change our mind like, hey, thank you for letting me know that I was triggered and trying to keep me safe. I am safe and it's okay. And our brain's like, Whoo, okay, perfect. And it can kind of just go back to its rest and digest state. And then last but not least, obviously go to therapy. If you can talk to a mental health professional, if you can, I promise you it will help and it will change your world. And if you go to a therapist and you're like, I'm not really liking this, try a different therapist, right? It's not one size fits all. We have to kind of try around and like see who's a good fit for us. So I'm gonna take a deep breath. I hope that you guys take a deep breath. I know that this stuff can be kind of hard and uncomfortable to talk about. So if you are listening to this, I hope that you just give yourself a hug, a pat on the back, a high five, bat on the back, a high five, whatever, and just be proud of yourself for holding space to talk about something that can be uncomfortable and overwhelming. I'm sending you guys so, so much love. I hope your Februarys are continuing on a great journey and I look forward to chatting with you on Tuesday. Bye, you guys.